Hi, in this video I'll show you how to convert existing blog gadget extension to version 3.0. Because 3.0 is web application, extension must be compiled and deployed as DLL. I start with NuGet package with old add this extension. Every NuGet package can be opened as zip folder and files can be extracted. I need source files, so I copy package, rename it with extension .zip, and open package in NuGet package explorer. This is a little utility I can download for free. Uh, what we see here is this extension has multiple files, all under content, app code, extensions. Package ID is important. It must match extension name, so I copy it here and will use for both project and class name for extension. Open in Visual Studio and add new class library project. Delete generated class 1. Next, I need to migrate old package files into project. I'll open zip file, navigate to extension files under content, app code, extensions, and drag them into new project folder. To let Visual Studio know about these files, I'll have to use show all files option to make them visible and then include into project in the context menu. Looking at imported files, you'll notice that red squiggly is indicating Visual Studio does not understand what system.web and core library are. Uh, to fix this, I'll add references to both blockengine.core project and system.web assembly. There are a couple conventions to follow when create or update extension. Uh, first is extension name. It should match package name. Second is a version number. It is not restricted, but would be helpful to indicate minimum required block engine version in the first, in this case 3.0, used as first two digits. And uh, extension version here is uh, 0.1 as a second two digits. Uh, again, not restricted, but will be clearly indicating your intent. At this point, all is ready to build DLL. Switch to release mode and run build command to generate binary DLL file. After build completed, it will produce addthis.dll under project directory bin release. This is a file that needs to be distributed as extension that Blog Engine will be using instead of all of those .cs files we used to push under app code directory.
the next step will be updating NuGet package. The content in the NuGet world indicates application root, and for binaries there is a lib folder that must be added. I have to add this folder and put my DLL there for NuGet to distribute it in application bin. An old content folder is no longer needed, so I'll delete it. In the Edit Metadata section, I can update package version and other information if desired. New package is saved with version as part of the name, so multiple versions of the same package can coexist. Packages installed and used from Vlogagent's admin panel. You can see here a list of extensions currently in use and a list of packages available for installed from the gallery. Version 3.0 supports multiple galleries and you can switch between them in the UI. Default for version 3.0 is gallery feed at dnbe.net slash v01. If a new package became available in the feed, it has to be uploaded to the dnba.net site. It will be uploaded to the sandbox, tested and added to the feed. Along with package file, we can also upload a picture to be used as package icon and optionally leave a mail to get notification when package will get published. After extension available in the feed, it should appear as an option in the list in admin panel. Here anyone can install it by just clicking a link. We have to wait a little because adding new DLL to the bin folder will force application pool to restart. When all is completed and app back online, we should see a check mark indicating extension was installed. Going back to extensions list, now should show extensions was added and can also be uninstalled if needed. This particular extension also has customization options in the settings. Uh, they used to add or remove buttons, change position, etc. There are a lot of stuff here as you can see. One small problem I noticed is one of the settings uses angle brackets as part of the value. Uh, this not sit well with form update and will crash on save. To fix this, I would need to modify my extension and submit new version to the gallery. First I'm going back to Visual Studio and do search and replace on all instances where violating code is used within project. So here I'm looking for anonymous between angle brackets and remove these brackets from the code. When done, last thing is to change extension version to 0.2 then save and compile.
Next is to update package with new DLL. So I'll have to repeat steps done before by opening package file, removing DLL it uses and drag their new that was updated. This package is a new version and will be saved with new version in the file name as well. Again, repeating steps to upload new version at the gallery site. Nothing new, just make sure you do not upload package with the same name and wait for it to be verified and appear in the feed. Because we installed extension with bad settings, we need to remove them before we update. Web applications usually cache everything, so to recycle I'll first delete settings file, which in my case saved in XML at app data folder. Uh, when database provider used, you would need to delete record from the database. And uh, then I clear browser cache in case it still stores all the data. Uh, this should get rid of old extension settings, so I can upgrade to the latest. When new version available in the gallery, it should also become available in UI for update. If I go to the gallery listing, I'll see an icon indicating that updated package available and will upgrade my local same way it was installed, by clicking a link. Same rules applied. It will take a while for application pool to recycle, and when app come back to life, we should see icon changes to checkmark, indicating that it was updated and ready to be used. After extension installed, let's make sure it works. Add this extension is supposed to add social links to the post, so I'm going to the post to check if anything was added by default before making any changes to the extension settings. As you can see, there are a few buttons which means extension is working. Now I can check if its settings updatable and I can change the way it looks. As a test, I'll try to disable two Facebook buttons and see if they'll disappear from the post. I set both to be disabled and hidden, update settings, and verify buttons no longer added. Looks like this time it works fine. No errors and extensions ready for use. Which concludes this exercise. Thank you for watching.